When did the idea for Passion Flicks begin? Passion Flicks, the idea of Passion Flicks came about, uh, was actually Joni's idea. Joni Kane is our uh, founding partner. She had the idea quite a few years ago. Uh, she wanted to, when Fifty Shades of Grey came out, she was wondering why there isn't a place for us to watch romance novels that have been turned into movies when the movie was such a success. So she actually uh, got the URL, passionflix.com, and said, I'm going to do this. And then many years later, nothing happened to it until one uh, New Year's Eve, she decided, I'm going to make it happen. And she booked a flight to LA. And it just so happened that Joni and I had met a few months prior to that. She had watched a movie of mine on ION called You Cast a Spell on Me. And she contacted me the next day and said, I absolutely loved your movie. I loved how you directed that movie. And I would, be, uh, I would really love it if you would take one of my movies and direct that. Um, and normally, I, you, know, you get a lot of people that solicit you. And, um, and so normally, you just know I'm going to ignore that. But I couldn't. Her note was so sweet. And she was just so open in her communication to me that I was like, OK, let me have a look at the script. I read it, and I was like, she can really write. She's a good writer. So let's meet. And then we tried to make that, we tried to bring that movie to a network, but uh, no one would buy it because it was a little too sensual. It was a little too risque. It had to do with magic. And that doesn't really work well with a lot of network television. So uh, that didn't work. But when she came over here uh, that February, at the beginning of February, we sat down and had lunch with our other partner, Gina. And over tuna fish sandwiches, she told us this thought that she had of passion flicks. And we went, great. It's a great idea. We're going to do it with you. And we literally started the next day um, on founding. Basically, I had to create the company, the business plan, put together a full proposal, come up with the idea of how we're going to do all this. And, um, and then I spent the next few months raising money. And uh, well, it was about a year to raise the money and then optioned books and made our first feature last March. So I know you- Long answer. <laughs> well, no, that's really interesting. So you had never really, you didn't know Joni from, and that's her name, sorry, Joni, yeah. right. You didn't know her previously. It was just that initial email and you just sort of went on a gut feeling that, wow, this could be somebody I want to work with. I went, to, yes, well, writers, um, so the answer is yes. I didn't know Joni very well at all, except for the communication we'd had on the one screenplay that she'd written. Mm -hmm. And that screenplay was good. And when you, as a director, get to work with a screenwriter and they are, um, they are open to your comments and your notes and they adjust the screenplay according to how you see it as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. that, that collaboration just forms a deep partnership to begin with. So I didn't know her personally. I'd never met her in, in person until February, but we'd worked together by email and phone calls for a few months prior to that. And so as a filmmaker, I knew her well. I see. Okay. So then you raised, was it 4.7 million in seed funding? 4.75. 4.75, okay. Yeah, okay. 4.753. Okay, right. Okay, good to know. Um, so can you just briefly tell us how this happened? Did you have specific people in mind you know you wanted to approach or? Well, so that was the difficult part. Firstly, I'm related to a lot of people that have raised a lot of money, which is helpful. And so I went to them for advice. What do I do? Who do you approach? And they basically said, everybody. You just go to anybody. You just constantly tell what the idea is to every single person that you meet. And somebody is going to say, hey, I have somebody that might be interested in that. And that's what happened. So I literally just went to every single person that I knew and I said that had any ability to, to invest. And I said, this is the idea. This is what I'd like to do. Do you have any advice for me? And would you be interested in coming on board? And some people came on board with $5,000. Some people came on board with $50,000. So it wasn't, they weren't huge amounts, but almost everybody that I spoke to wanted to participate because they think the idea is really good. I'm always wondering how that happens. Is it a long email? Is it a phone call? Is it when you see them at an event? It's all of those things. So I will take the opportunity to tell people about Passion Flicks every single place that I go. So it'll be at a coffee shop while I'm wearing a Passion Flicks t-shirt and I will tell the people there. It will be at a lunch, it'll be at an event, it'll be, I do send emails, I don't send long emails because most of the people that you're dealing with don't have time to read long emails and they'll ignore them. 
So short and to the point with very specific information in it and what you want. What it is that you're looking to do, what it is you want, and I'm happy to provide you with any further supportive documents for you to review this. That was basically what I do. I'm about to do it again because we need to do another raise. Okay, so is it similar to raising money for a film or is it, are they two separate animals in some sense? Raising money for a film is, uh, it is different because here I'm raising money for a company that is a distribution company that has an, uh, an overall goal, which is to empower women through emotional strength, while at the same time owns multiple movies. So we are not making one movie, we're making 50. So if you invest in Passionflix, you get a part of all 50 movies that we own forever. So should the company not do well as a distribution company, you still have all these assets and you're able to sell them and hopefully we'll make that $50,000 back. I'm sure we will. Um, so that's why it's not a difficult um, ask when it comes to investment because when you're looking for an investment in one single picture, it's basically saying, hi, I have a movie I want to make. I'm going to spend $3 million on this movie. Can you give me some money? And hopefully everybody else likes this movie and I can get a distributor and I can get it into the theaters or get it into DVD or sell it in the foreign market and hopefully we'll make our money back. And then you can get your 20%. So that's the filmmaking, the individual filmmaking side, which is, it's a different beast. And there are a lot of people that want to invest that way, specifically in California or in the US. I mean, there's, there's, tax write-offs that are involved, there's you know all these different things that are um, positive for, for investors to invest in individual films, but that's not what we're looking for.